Welcome back to episode 22, Shop Stories. In this episode, we are starting this new series called Build It or Buy It. Would you rather build your surfboard or buy your surfboard? I'd rather build it. It's more fun. What would you rather do? Well, for the waves today, I want to fish, so I'd build it. You'd rather build it? Yeah. Mine don't turn out good, <laughs> but that looks pretty good. But, <laughs> dude, are these things straight? Yeah. Timmy said the same thing. Timmy looked at it and he's like, they're crooked. I'll show you right now, Noah. <laughs> All my fins at six degrees. On the money. Funny. Well, how come it's not touching the fin right there? Oh, maybe it is a little crooked. <laughs> no, it's gonna It is a little crooked. It works great though. They're both like a little bit like that though, so. That means that the cheeks up. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> I, I was, there's way, a lot of science involved you're here. You're getting man. way too into it. It's just surfboards. We're not, we're not making spaceships. Come on. What are you gonna ride? Dude, Noah? I think the waves are below average. So I'm gonna ride the rainbow chaser yeah. by infinity surfboards. Four fins, four times the fun. Four times the speed. Four fins, four, four times the wave. Four times. Four waves, four air, four turns. Five dollars, five fins, five weeks, five months? Five weeks? Five weeks. Five, five weeks, weeks? not five months. No, I know. It's like a month and a half. Five weeks is a month and a week. Yeah, but we run it. <laughs> Special <laughs> guest, Richie. Would you rather build your surfboard or buy your surfboard? Quality, I'm going to buy it. Yeah. For the fun, I'm going to build it. All right, all right. Two different ways of getting surfboards, building them and buying them. Everyone that surfs should build a surfboard at some time. But today, we're going to go down to the shop, get a blank, and show you what goes into actually making these cool toys that we ride every day. surf down here at creek it's pretty subpar um, but always good to get in the water in the morning rinse off it's kind of like my morning shower for the day now we're gonna go down to the shop continue our series build it or buy it we're gonna build a surfboard today show you how much really goes into the board building process from shaping 
to glassing, sanding, all of it. But I'm really indecisive and I don't know which board I want to make, whether I want to make a fish like what I rode this morning or if I want to make a long board, something a little more cruisy for summertime. So we're going to flip a coin. Heads is going to be long board, tails is going to be a fish. Tails is a fish. I guess we're making a fish. So we're going to go down to use surf, grab a yerba mate, save it up to the boys really quick. And then we're going to head right across the street to Basham's and go look at some blanks, figure out what we want, and then start shaping. I'll see you over there. We made it down here to the alley. We're at Used Surf. Best surf shop in the world. We're just coming over here to get one of these real quick. First of all, Used Surfboard's over here. And then across the street, we have the Surfboard Building Sanctuary, where they sell all the tools to make your own surfboard. All right, we're in here at Basham's. Eric's scared of the camera, but he told us exactly what we need. So we're looking for 510. This guy. They're almost the same. This one probably has a little less rocker in the nose, it looks like. Anyway, this one. This one. And I'll show you all the tools they got too. So Basham is everything you need from ding work stuff, micro balloons, cabocil. They even have fin boxes, single fin, fin boxes. They got leash plugs. Pretty much come here and get everything you need to make a surfboard. They also have shaping bays here that you can rent and you can use their bay. And I think they have templates and stuff that you can borrow as well. Got our plant. We got our wall planer that we got from Home Depot. Anyone can go get a planer. It's like these ones are the ones a lot of people use too. It's just a uh, Hitachi little green planers. Super easy. You can kind of get whatever you want. They're all made for cutting wood but we use them to cut foam. So this is one of those rooms that I was talking about earlier that Basham's rents out. So you can come in here and they'll charge you an hourly rate to work on your surfboard. So you can go out front, buy your blank, buy your tools, come back here, and make a surfboard. First things first, when you get your blank, if you want to skin your blank and get it down to thickness, you'll template it and then cut it and then clean up the shape, finish it kind of thing. As you get further into your blank, your foam gets softer. So on the deck, I'm gonna do one or two passes, not many passes not taking off too much foam on the bottom, I'm gonna take off a lot more. Inside this blank, you can picture a surfboard sitting in you. You want your board to come up to the top rather than down to the bottom. Ideally, you'll have more of this dense foam on the top of your board so you get less pressure dense and a little bit stronger. Chuck on my respirator, take off my shirt, because it's hot. Ideally, you want this to be flat. You don't want that. That is bad. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to get it all flat and nice and even like this, so that your template, your board, is gonna be easier to make. Because this blank is blown and it's blown perfectly flat in uh, mold, and you kinda wanna keep that same idea, the same amount of rocker, everything in it. Keep going, do the other side. These are called calipers. They're used to measure the thickness of your surfboard. So now that we've taken a bit of foam off, open them up, find the midpoint, find the thickest part of the board, which is like right there. It's at two and three quarters thick. So I want five five, nineteen and a quarter, two and a quarter. This is when it gets really critical. You want to check your thickness a bunch, otherwise you'll go past it. You can't get more foam back. So you can move the board up or down in the blank to add more nose rocker, less nose rocker, more tail rocker, you know? The last one was pretty flat. I liked it, but I didn't like it a whole lot. 
You always want to measure from the bottom. And then you go five feet, five inches. And then you go, what's half of five feet five? Half of five, five. Three plus three is four. I mean, three plus three is six. Holy sh**. What is this? Divided by two is 30. Math. Divided by two. 32.5. So you find your midpoint. What I like to do with these little fishes is go wide point back about an inch, and I want it to be 5'5, five, five, 19 and a quarter, 2 and a quarter, right? So you take one of these, get it even on your stringer, make sure it's straight, you mark 19 and a quarter on either side. There's Eric Rubner and Brandon Rajenovich. It's a ball of great shape. What the f, bro? <laughs> this ain't shape camp. Am I in your way? No, it's just seven right here. Oh! What do you do for your tail with? Fishes? Yeah. Gosh, I want to say I'd like to stay in the 15 and a half range. 15 and a half. And then the tip of the toe. Eight looks about right. Yeah, eight's good. That looks good. One shock off. That we got our points drawn with our widths that we want. You find the template that kind of fits in it. And it's kind of you just wing it. You want your points to match up nicely. Bam. That's the curve. Flip it over. Do the same thing. I fit this template into it and got little bits and pieces of it. You kind of just like fit it in there best you can and try to keep the curve consistent. And you try to get as close as you can to the line. Sometimes I like to go a little further out just so that I can come back through and fix things but keep your saw vertical. So we got our template cut. Smooth out these edges a little bit. Then you set it up, stand back, and you look at it. It looks kind of okay. That's all you gotta do. The next episode, build it or buy it. We are gonna come back to the shop. We're gonna clean up top and bottom, and we're gonna put the rails on this bad boy. Let's go over to the shop, use surf, and I wanna check out a couple more boards, finish my Yerba, and Talk to the boys, see if they surfed, and check in, see how everything's going. All right, so we made it out of the dungeon, across the street, fashions. Now we're back over here at Use Surf. We're gonna go get some inspiration. So the guy that you just met, Brandon Regenovich, this is one of his boards, drag surfboards. Great boards, very fun. Here's what we're kind of getting after here. Nice round rails, flat rocker. Easy to surf, great for summertime. This is basically what we were trying to make. Let's see if there's some others in here. There's gotta be some more. Here we go. Panda. This is like what we're trying to make as well. It's a little fishy. Everybody's got their own rendition of it. Looks like a fun board. Everybody makes a fish, seems like. And everybody's fish is a little bit different. We make fishes that look like this. And this. And this. It actually has some funny little channels on it. Little nooks. <laughs> Looks fun. Don't forget, probably took six people to make this surfboard. It's not just the shaper that you should think. It's also the glassers, fin setters, sanders, everybody. So thanks for tuning back in to Shop Stories episode 22, where we're starting our new series, Build It or Buy It. Today we learned how to shape a board, the very beginning stages of shaping. And tune back in next week, we'll learn how to put rails on a surfboard and also start the laminating process. So, tune back in next week. I'll catch you later, I gotta go work. That's the spot. <laughs>